Hi boys and girls, it's Mrs. Harley, and today I'm going to read the story The Invisible Boy to you. And while I'm reading this today, I'm gonna to use my sticky notes to really focus on my character traits. So I will think about what my character says, what my character does, what my character thinks, what my, how my character looks, and how my character feels to really help me understand the character better. But I'm also really gonna stop and think about making those text to self connections. My goal is to better understand my story. And when I make those text to self connection, I'm going to dig deeper. Remember, there's two different types of connections you can make. There's a surface level connection, and then there's the ones that make us dig a lot deeper. And our goal is always to dig deep. So when I'm making a text to self connection, I might use those sentence starters of, this reminds me of this because, or I understand how the character feels because this happened to me too. I don't really want to say, oh, the character is a girl and I'm a girl or they have a dog and I'm a go um, I have a dog too, because that's really those surface level connections. And that doesn't really help us to dig real deep into our reading. And that's always our goal. So let's get started. Can you see Brian, the invisible boy? Even Mrs. Carlotti has trouble noticing him in her classroom. She's too busy dealing with Nathan and Sophie. If you notice, this is Brian right here, and Brian doesn't have any color. Nathan has problems with what Mrs. Carletti calls a volume control. He uses his outside voice, inside, too much. Sophie whines and complains when she doesn't get her way. So I'm gonna write Nathan and Sophie on my sticky note, and I'm gonna write that they're troublemakers for right now because their actions of whining and complaining and using an outside voice rather than an inside voice makes me think that about them. Nathan and Sophie take up a lot of space. Brian does not. And I think this makes me think about when I was younger and in class and had those kids that were kind of troublemaker. So I'm gonna make a text to self connection here. I'm gonna use my little connecting links to do that on my sticky note. And I'm gonna say, this reminds me of when I was in a classroom with kids that took up a lot of space, which made it hard for me to focus. When the bell rings for recess, Micah and JT take turns choosing kids for their kickball teams. The best players get picked first, then the best friends of the best players, then the friends of the best friends, only Brian is left still waiting and hoping. Another text to self connection for me is, this reminds me of a time when I was last we picked playing dodgeball as a kid. I felt very sad and left out. Probably much like Brian, it's helping me to better understand Brian's character because I'm thinking about my own self and making those text to self connections. JT glances in Brian's directions and just as quickly looks away. We've got enough players for each team, he yells to the others. Let's play ball. So JT's words here are, we got enough players for each team. Let's play ball. His words are that he glances and notices that Brian's over here by himself, but he doesn't do anything about it. That tells me that JT is not empathetic and that he's more of a bystander instead of an upstander. So that's what I'm writing on my sticky note. In the cafeteria, Madison and her friends talk about her birthday party. They rope swing over the pool. That was awesome, says JT. Yeah, so was a water slide, adds Fiona. That was the best pool party ever. I'm so glad you guys had fun, says Madison. Everybody did, except Brian, because Brian wasn't invited. Again, another text to self connection I can make here. Uh, this reminds me of when I wasn't included in this special event and I felt left out too. Ryan's feelings must be pretty hurt right now. At choosing time while the other kids played board games and read, Brian sits at the table doing what he loves to do best. He draws fire-breathing dragons scaling tall buildings. And here we have a dragon shooting fire out and we have someone holding out a marshmallow on a stick and he's toasting that marshmallow. 
And so the kid is saying, thank you for toasting my marshmallow. Space aliens locked in intergalactic, intergalactic battles. And we have an alien here saying, I got you now. Greedy pirates digging for treasures. And over here we have a pirate saying, crackers, er, yay, says the bird. <clears throat> Excuse me. And superheroes with the power to make friends wherever they go. And the superhero is saying, hi. I notice there's a bee on his shirt for Brian. And there's a character saying, hi, friend, have a cookie. On Monday morning, Mrs. Carlotti introduces Justin, a new student, to the class. Brian smiles shyly at him. Some of the other kids sneak looks at Justin, trying to figure out if he's cool enough to be their friend. They haven't quite made up their minds yet. Oh, I'm meeting a new character. I'm meeting Justin. So I'm going to put Justin's name on my sticky note. I'm going to hold it to start to think about the type of person that he is. At lunch, Madison and JT watch Justin eat with chopsticks. What's that? asks Madison as she points it at Justin's food. It's bulgaji. Bul what? Bulgaji. It's Korean barbecued beef. My grandma made it for me. It's really good. Do you want to try some? There's no way I'd eat bulgaji. And the kids laugh. All of them, that is, except for Brian. He sits there wondering which is worse, being laughed at or feeling invisible. So I already know that I think I can say that Brian is creative and artistic from the great drawings that he did. But I'm going to add on my, to my sticky note that Brian is also kind. <clears throat> and I think more than that, Brian is more understanding because he's thinking about would it be worse to be invisible or laughed at. So I think he understands that Justin right now isn't really feeling part of the group. So I'm going to put that sticky note about Brian right there on my page. The next day when Justin goes to his cubby to put away his backpack, he notices a piece of paper with his name on it. Justin, I thought the bulgogi looked good. Brian, yum. That action there of Brian tells us that he is super kind there. He's giving Justin a note and telling him that he thought the bulgogi looked good, even though the other kids in the class picked on him about it. At morning recess, Brian finds a piece of chalk on the ground and starts drawing away. You're Brian, right? Yeah. And Justin says, thanks for the note. Hey, Justin, Amelia calls out from the tether ball. You're up. Sorry, I gotta go, says Justin. By the way, that's a really cool drawing, he adds, before taking off. So I'm going to say that Justin is kind on my sticky note. I'm going to hold that to see what else I'm going to learn about Justin. Back in class, Mrs. Carletti asks the kids to team up in twos or threes for a special project. The kids scurry around the room to pair off. Brian heads towards Justin. I'm all ready with Justin, says Emilio. Fine someone else. Ooh, that wasn't very kind of Emilio. I don't like how he did that. Brian looks at the floor wishing he could draw a hole right there to swallow him up. Justin says, Mrs. Carletti said we can have, up, can have up to three people in our group. We only have two. Come on, Emilio. Let him work with us. Okay, I guess. That was a really thoughtful thing for Justin to say. That lets me know that Justin is thoughtful. Mrs. Carletti gives the class directions for the project. Your assignment is to work together to write a story about what you see in that photograph. Whoa, cool, says Amelia. What kind of people do you think would live in houses like that? I don't know. I bet Brian could draw them to go with our story, says Justin. Brian smiles as he takes out his lucky pens. And are you noticing, have you been noticing actually that our friend Brian here, he was getting some color. So here he was still invisible when Justin invited him to be included in the group. He's getting a little bit of color. And look at that. He is full of color. And look at his appearance. He has a smile on his face. He's feeling like part of the group. Those beautiful drawings they made. It's lunchtime again. Brian's least favorite part of the day. 
another 20 long minutes of kids talking and laughing with everyone else but him. Brian, he hears someone shout, someone shout, hey, Brian, over here. Brian turns and sees Justin waving him over. A million nods at Brian as he makes room for him at the table. Notice Brian is still in color. Brian's pretty, feeling, feeling pretty good about himself because he's being included. Oh, look. And we have them offering a cookie. Do you remember early in our story when Super Brian, superhero power was to be able to make friends and the superhero was offered a cookie? Maybe, just maybe, Brian's not so invisible after all. And that, my friends, is the end of our story. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope while you're reading, you're taking time to really stop and think and dig deep. Make sure you're forming those ideas about your character and make sure you're stopping to make those text to self connections when you can, because it will help you to better understand your story. I hope you have some sticky notes at home. If you don't, you can always write it on a piece of paper. These are Mrs. Harley's favorite things to use while I read. I hope that you guys are staying safe, washing your hands, getting outside to enjoy some fresh air while we're on this extended leave. We can't wait to see you all again. We miss you. Have a great day. Bye-bye.